What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Laidback Trucker 7, y'all. We here, bruh. I'm here in the flesh, man. I'm glad y'all here with me. You feel me? Y'all could have been anywhere else, man. Uh, we gonna start the stream off, man. Right, we got this truck right here. I did put an engine pack in the game, but um, that engine pack don't work. In terms of some trucks have their own engines or allow you to use only SCS engines, and this truck only allows me to use SCS engines. So, uh, I can't put a custom engine in here yet. I mean, it's in game, but unless I have a different truck, it's not going to happen. So, it's the inside of the truck, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, of course, if you were in real life, you have to roll across the middle there into the bed just to go to sleep. But uh, that's how all these uh, cab over trucks are. So... We're going to get rolling and go pick up a load here in a hot second. But before we do, y'all, uh, I just want y'all to hear a little something real quick. I pray it bless you. It's a nice little message for everybody, man, and myself. You know, I'm not immune to uh, not receiving the word, man, because I feel like I'm a Christian, or I know that I'm a Christian. And uh, forgive me for saying feel like, because you got to know that you're a Christian, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, like, I, I, I know that. But that doesn't mean that I don't I don't visit God's word or I don't accept the monocene. The monocene is uh, the discipline, the, the, the reminding, you know, the warnings, etc. Because people fall away, you know what I'm saying? People do fall away, folks. And, uh, of course, you, I don't want to be a person that falls away. And I pray that you don't either when you come to receive Christ or if you already have. You know what I'm saying? Stay going hard for God, for God you know what I'm saying? So, God is amazing, man. He does some amazing things if we just allow him to be who he is and we step out the way. That's for real, man. That is for real. Nothing is coincidence, man. 
Nothing is coincidence, man. The word of God says he neither sleeps nor slumbers, so he sees everything. Nothing is uh, new to him under the sun or under the moon. He sees everything. He knows everything. So, man, I am having a blessed morning. I got up, man, because uh, I was sleeping pretty good, I must say. Uh, woke up and... I don't think I uh, actually had to get up one time throughout the night, you know, you know, to use the bathroom or something like that. I was, I was out, right? And then I woke up from this dream, and the dream was my dispatcher was telling me uh, that I messed up, that the load ain't gonna get to where it needs to go on time, that. It's never my fault. That's the problem with me. And immediately I just woke up out of my sleep. I'm like, hold up. Turn left. I, I cast that down, you know what I'm saying? Because once again, folks, you got to take every thought captive. That's what the word of God say. Take every thought captive. Why do you take every thought captive? Because not every thought is something that you should hold on to or you should keep and afterwards i cast that that you know when i woke up i cast that that dream down that that thought down i was like man what is this this is some negativity type stuff and then as i started the truck because it got cold too and that was another reason why i got up because i was like man it's kind of cold over here in texas it's sitting at 50, it was sitting at 49, 50 degrees, but for some reason it felt colder. I don't understand why, but it did. And so I got up and I started my truck, and then my truck was saying, "Hey, I need some more, uh, you know, engine cooling." And I was like, "Okay, well, let me get some engine cooling going on outside." So I got dressed and whatever, went outside and started to, uh, you know, put some into cooling in there and whatnot and next thing you know uh, as i was putting the engine cooling in there i got to think to myself like am i a person that don't take responsibility for anything like i was like you know i want to walk in humbleness right so i was like god if that's true, I'm sorry. You know, and, and God does use dreams to get your attention. You know what I'm saying? And so I wouldn't say every dream be like, oh, stop, you know. But God does use dreams to get our attention and tell us things that we, you know, we need to know, right? And so, uh, one, uh, example in particular in the Bible Joseph had a dream and he told his brothers and his father that one day hey man you're going to be bowing down to me and of course they got mad you know got jealous that fact the brothers hated him <laughs> they hated him you know they even threw him into slavery and everything but uh, of course through all that God used all that and Joseph became a high-ranking official in, in Egypt, and it became a uh, definitely a blessing, right? Of course, you have to go through some things sometimes to receive your blessing. I mean, that's with anything. That's true to true with anything. Sometimes, sometimes the blessing just don't come and without any opposition. Sometimes you have opposition. You know, but you got to stand fast and believe God, trust God that it's going to come through. No matter what the situation looks like. Once again, faith is the substance of things not seen for the things that we believe that we can't see. In other words, faith is the stuff, believing that the stuff that we we're asking God for. Even though we can't see it yet, we believe that he's able and, and willing to do it. You know what I'm saying? So, 
we just gotta keep believing. You know, if you can see everything that you know you're asking God for, or see everything that you believe in God for, should I say, then that's not faith. You know what I'm saying? It's not. And so furthermore, I was just like, God, I want to walk in humbleness. I don't want to be a person that does not take accountability for their actions. And so I was like, Lord, forgive me. Had I walked in error where I did something wrong and I didn't take responsibility for it. And so instead of continually or refusing to see where I could be wrong at and once again we all you know sin and, and fall short of the glory of God so once again we have to keep in mind like you know this could have been a true dream of you know what let's start taking accountability for our actions if it's, if it's our fault, it's our fault. Let's not deflect. Let's not, uh, you know, go down a path of stubbornness and bullheadedness. So, yeah, man, I just want to share y'all, share with y'all my dream, man, that I had, I want to say this morning. Uh, but uh, shortly after, I got up, you know. But to God be the glory, man. When you walk in Christ, man, you start to you know, take things and you start to really analyze it and really put yourself in the sh in, in the shoes of, okay, this could have been me. I could have done this. Matter of fact, and a lot of times we can say we definitely did do right because we're sinners, man. We, we don't always do things right. And we will never be a person or people that do things right because of the fact that uh, we have that sin nature within our flesh, you know, so we have to constantly give it to God and ask God, hey, please, uh, you know, do a marvelous work in me like only you can do because we need you to do it. Because if you don't do it, we won't be able to, you know, do it ourselves or overcome it ourselves. A lot of times we sit here, man, he does not want to get going, does he? Shoot. Uh, a lot of times we sit here and we blame others or we look at what everybody else is doing and God is saying, hey, look, man, my way is better because my way would keep you from things that's going to harm you but we have to be willing to accept that and all it is is God showing us a better way to live and it's it definitely is a better way to live it's just when you've been doing wrong your whole life it's hard for you to be like all right cool I'm gonna cut this out cold turkey it's just like cigarettes right or drinking or other things maybe like drugs you know uh, when you start doing those things it's hard to break those habits because you may not want to do those things and then maybe you do because a lot of times we do want to run the sin we do want to go out there and do whatever right but when you've been shown a better way are you going to continue going down that rabbit hole or are you going to be like man, I need to quit this. And once again, it's hard sometimes, right? But this is why we have Jesus. Because Jesus can show us not only a better way, but that he also can help us. He can definitely help us. He can give us that strength that we need to overcome. Why? Because he said, in this life, you're going to have hardships, which are tragedies or, you know, pains or whatever tribulations but be of good cheer because I've overcome the world he said that to his disciples before he went to the cross and then he went to the cross to be the propitiation which is the substitute
for our sin. You know, because we we needed a sinless blood to cover us. And every man on earth has sinned and fallen short of glory. So there's no way that we could have done it. So we needed Jesus, the God man, to come down and do what only he can do. So I, I thank you, Lord, and all glory to God for being that substitute for all our unrighteousness. Now, that doesn't mean we get a free pass and we keep on going out there sinning. No, it means to change and turn away and, and ask God for forgiveness and his strength to overcome so that we start living a holy life. And yes, we're going to get things wrong at times. We're going to fall short at times. But guess what? A righteous man falls seven times and seven times he gets back up. What does that mean? You may, you may be walking in, in the light. You may be a saved person. And you may make a, you know, or have a failure every now and then. But that don't mean you lay down and you take that failure. Don't believe the lies of the enemy. Because there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Jesus. Condemnation means disapproval. There's no disapproval in Jesus. If Jesus accepted, accepted you, guess what, brother? You say, man, and that's just it. But the enemies don't lie to you and say, no, nah, you're not saved because you sinned. No. Listen here. Oh, I, I got to keep going straight. I thought I had to get off. When you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're good. Now it's time for you to go out there and make Jesus proud. You feel me? In other words, and when you fall short, Confess your, sin, your sins to God. He is faithful and able to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And then get up and keep going. That's what you do. You get up and keep going. Because I love you. He loves you more. And we want to see you make it to the end. You know what I'm saying? We want to see you in that new Jerusalem. I'm trying to be in that new Jerusalem. You feel me? And that's what it is. Because there's going to be a new heaven and new earth. Whether you believe that or not. So I pray this I pray this bless you. I don't know why I was tripping over my words, whatever, but hey, God got me, he's gonna get it out. I pray it bless, uh, bless you and man. Keep going hard, man. Keep going hard for life. God. Don't let nobody tell you otherwise. So you know, like my pastor would say, everybody else coming out the closet, you might as well come out the closet too. <laughs> it's so true, man. This ain't a knock on, you know, homosexuality or whatever, but, you know, I remember it was a time when people was, uh, you know, living in sin like that, and they would not tell nobody about what it is that they was doing. Now it's like, yo, look, man. I'm out here. <laughs> you know, even game bangers or whatever would be like, yo, we're not telling you what we're doing. Now everybody's seeing it. Yeah, I was out there. I shot Tupac. Like, what? <laughs> You're not supposed to say that. You know what I'm saying? You ain't supposed to be telling people, you know what I'm saying, all this stuff. Like, you need to shut up. You're going to jail. You know that, right? <laughs> but anyway. That's just a little joke, well, you know, for y'all who follow some of the stuff that to have done, you know, the news or whatever about Tupac, you know, recently somebody came out and was like, yeah, you know, that was us that did that, you know what I'm saying, after all these years, so, now they're sitting in prison, or in jail right now, so, that's crazy, anyway, the Bible also says the righteous love judge, uh, judgment. Uh, no, the righteous love justice. So hey, if he did do it. I'm glad he got caught because it was wrong. I mean, you may not like somebody, but that don't mean you go out there and kill them. <laughs> that don't, that's just silly. Hey, do you know that a lot of us we do what the Lord has commanded? Uh, and we not even know it. We may not even realize. 
What do you mean, Jay? I'll tell you what I mean. A lot of us, we don't steal, we don't kill, you know, we don't commit adultery. That's just a few things. Some of us love our neighbor as ourselves, right? Which is the second commandment in the Bible that God gives us. And guess what? You know that's God's word. A lot of us be like, oh, that's that's just the law. That's the stuff that you shouldn't do, period. Right, it was the law that Moses was given, which is the Ten Commandments, by God. He got them from God. And they took those same laws and they put them into law. <laughs> Around the world. A lot of these things you cannot do. Still, no matter where you live, you know, and so we do a lot of things that the Bible says that we should not do. You know what I'm saying? We're walking in God's law. Once again, this there's in the Word it says if you know. It says that a, a fool, only, only a fool believe, uh, says that there is no God. Only a fool says that there is no God. Why? Because his evidence that he does that he exists is in nature. Just look around, bro. Look around. There's no way that all this just happened. There's no way. You know, people talk about evolution. Well, you go to the zoo all the time, but you don't see a monkey turn into a human. You don't you don't see an ape turn into a man. Apes are primates. You know what I'm saying? Which are monkeys, gorilla chimps, orangs, everything. You don't see them turn into humans. Right? So how does how is evolution right? It's not. I mean, we've all been to this place. If, and if you haven't, you've seen it on TV. Everybody's seen Animal Planet at least one time. There's so much evidence already in the world about where or how things uh, went down. Whether it be the flood of Noah. I mean, they found the ark, y'all. They found Noah's Ark. They found the place of announcement, which is where Mary and the angel and the uh, and and the angel told Mary that you're gonna have a son and he's gonna be called Jesus. Like there already was that announcement. There's already a place. Or a place where that happened, excuse me. So, all you gotta do is look at history, man. Don't believe everything that you read nor hear, man. I mean, fact check me. I'll, I'm fine with it. Go ahead and fact check me. You can do that all day. <laughs> Don't bother me, y'all. Do what you need to do for you. But I'm telling you right now. These are real places, man. When you, you know, look at Jerusalem, that's a real place. The Red Sea is a real place. The Dead Sea is a real place. Syria is a real place. All these places are in the Bible. Babylon is a real place. That's over there in Iraq. So, I mean, look all these places up, y'all. Like, it's real places. Look up the, you know, the archaeological evidence of Noah's Ark. It's a real place. I mean, it's a real thing. Excuse me. They found it. They even have a, a rebuilding of the Ark, Noah's Ark, that you can actually visit in Kentucky. Look it up. 
So will y'all be like, man, there is no God. Bruh, it's a lot of evidence that suggests that there is. I would t- it, it's hard to be like, no. You know, it's hard to be like, you know, going along with all that type of stuff. Check this out, y'all. So all the engines right here, man. I got them all, but guess what? You know? That's... I mean, that's all we got for this truck right here. But it's all good. Uh, This is our Freightliner FL, and it is a cab over 86, 1986. I think we might be done with this truck. I'm going to just be real with y'all. only reason why I say that is because it ain't much to do with it. And it, it does look nice, and I wanted to stream it so y'all can see it. But anyway, if y'all like this truck, if you like the stream, man, come back, holla at your boy, Lake Back Trucker Seven. If you're on YouTube, it's J Dub, you know, what I'm saying, and the family. And um, once again, man, if you're looking at me or looking for me on YouTube, man, go to JLCM TV, and you'll see me over there. And most likely this stream will be over there too in a few days. But anyhow, yeah, we're going to go ahead and sign off on this truck right here. We're going to go to something else because I put that engine pack in it and I want to hear some, some, some engines. You know what I'm saying? But we did about, I want to say three runs with this truck. You know what I mean? A series of streams. So, and if y'all like the word of God, man, listen, God bless y'all. You know what I'm saying? God bless y'all. I pray y'all have a blessed, amazing day. You know what I'm saying? Take the word of God and run with it hard. Because times is, you know, getting perilous, getting short. We ain't got time to be messing around, man. We don't. So, I pray y'all enjoyed this, man. But it's your boy, Layback Trucker 7. Freightliner L, I mean FL86 he is gonna be out, man. Peace to the Middle East, y'all feed. And, and, and please do pray for peace in the Middle East. You know what I'm saying? We out. <laughs>